it'll sit here, sit with us until we leave this afternoon. Right. It may stay with us a couple of hours until the afternoon. <laughs> Come Monday, that thing is gone. <laughs> Come Monday, we put that mind on and says, okay, you know, enough of that. It's time to get real now. <laughs> the spiritual soldier in Christ realizes, no, it's already been time to get real. Being real is I'm keeping the word within me because I know I'm dealing with crazy folks. I know I'm dealing with crazy mentalities. I know I'm dealing with a crazy world. I got to be ready. I got to be ready to fight. Ain't no sitting the word of God to the side. Good soil will harvest and take in that word and produce fruit. An extremely good soil understands that when I produce fruit, God's going to start to prune me even more, as he says in John 15. I'm going to cut you a little bit, cut the excess growth out of your life so you can produce even more fruit. What kind of soil are you? Good soil? Bad soil? Something for you to determine. Good soil has a no-strings-attached relationship. In other words, good soil understands that what I do every day, I'm not doing it for the people that, that, that think I'm doing it for them. I'm doing it for God. All right, all right. Brother Van Cleve ain't singing for y'all. That's right. He's singing for God. That's right. And thanks to our free will that God has given us, we have a choice whether we're going to sing or not. Mm -hmm. And that's your ticket. Yeah. He's not doing it for you. The work we do here at KT. We're not doing it for anybody. Right We're doing it for God. Amen. The work we do on our secular jobs, you do it for God, that you may complete and help to fulfill his will, which is to what again? Bring all things together as one in Christ. You do have a purpose. It's not just a job you go clock in, let me go and do this thing and then leave. No, I have a purpose even as an educator. I don't just teach you how to get up on stage and talk to people. I don't just teach you uh, how to shift on the violin. My purpose is to deliver in such a way that I can help to fulfill God's will, to bring you closer to Christ. Good fruit, excuse me, good soil understands there's no strings attached to this. Because here's the problem. If I do it for you, then I'm going to automatically expect you to do it for me. Even if I don't tell you that. You know, I mean, I invited you to my birthday party. <laughs> could at least invite me to yours. You didn't even call me for my birthday. You didn't even send me a card. But I remember. And then I go and tell somebody else because, you know, I told Sister Williams I, I, I called her for her birthday. Remember we had the party? You were there? And look, and she, and she, she had that party didn't even have me over. I heard you were there. <laughs> and you didn't even tell me. <laughs> they plotted that together. They didn't want me there. They know how I eat. So, <laughs> so if I do it with strings attached, then I'm going to want something back. If I do it with no strings attached, I don't care whether you give it to me or not. I know who I did it for, who I continue to do it for. Good soil knows how to find the best in others. Good soil can look to someone and say, I see strengths in this capacity. I want to help you build and capitalize on those strengths. Youth, I hope you're paying attention to this because that's the challenge that I have to the adults in your area. <clears throat> Are we finding our youth and saying, I see some potential. In other words, I see your strengths. Let's build and capitalize on that. Amen. As opposed to, you remind me of them kids I saw on the news the other day, cutting up. I tell you kids one thing. Now, back in my day, I can tell you right now, if that's been the mentality, young ones don't want to hear that. They're not trying to hear that. Can you find what's right within me first? Because everybody's always finding things that are wrong. Isn't it easy to find things wrong with people? If I could sit, We could sit back and just stare at each other for the next two hours. And we can find things that's wrong. Outwardly, and if we know them, some of them, yeah, well, we can find things wrong. But how challenging is it sometimes to find the things that are right? Amen. Are you willing to go beyond that? That's what good soil does. Good soil wants other good soil around it so that more fruit can be produced. Good soil understands how to meet the needs of the church. Good soil even knows how to meet the needs of those outside of here. I was at, uh, where was I? I was at Church's Chicken. That's where I was. I keep wanting to say KFC, but I had a Church's Kick that, that one day. 
And I went to church, I was waiting in line, get my, you know, two-piece or whatever. <laughs> the young man, the man in line, watching me. Hey, how you doing? Don't I know you from somewhere? Uh, you know, you look like someone that knows the Lord. Look really nice and, you know, just, yeah, you just, just look like a Christian, good, good folk. And in my mind, in my mind, I was like, man, he's about to ask me for some money. Yeah. Like, you already know. I know the game. Y'all yeah, yeah, know. He's about to ask me for some dollars. <laughs> we already knew. So I was ready. At least I thought I was. I was waiting for him for the punchline. The ass. Yeah, maybe think I can score a couple of dollars to uh, get, some, get some chicken. I said, okay. You here in line? Let's go on, walk in, stay in line together. There's people behind us. Whatever. He'd be bold of him to walk out in the midst of the line. He asked for, some, for money to get some chicken. He said, here, it's $5. As soon as I gave him that $5, what do you think he did? Oh, oh, that man turned around so fast and walked out of that line. And I looked back and said, oh, oh, oh. I said, I thought you, I thought you was getting some chicken. <laughs> oh, you know, I can't, I can't get that chicken from 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 church, uh, from uh, from churches. I got, I got to go to KFC. I got to go up there. They got a better recipe. I got these coupons with me. Oh wow! You saw a look on my face. You could have put that on YouTube and put epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> epic fail. Yeah, he got me. But to meet the needs doesn't always mean giving somebody what they think they want. You meet their needs specifically. Sometimes folks don't need you to figure out their problems for you in the church. I just need you to listen. Yeah. I've had plenty of people who I've appreciated who I've just had to vent to. I didn't really need an answer. Yeah. I just need to tell you this was going on. This made me upset. Uh, somebody just listen to me. Yeah. You don't always need to figure it out. Yeah. Tell us what we're doing wrong and where we're going. Yeah. We don't need Job's friends, so to speak, all the time. Yeah. Can you meet the needs of others around you? Can you meet the needs of those within the body of Christ? Do you know them well enough to meet the needs? Do you know them well enough to know what their needs are? To connect with them. Good soil tends to be around good soil. Amen. And that's how mass fruit gets produced. Amen. Look at someone next to you and tell them, pray for your works in him. And be good soil. The fourth prayer of Paul also comes from verse 10. Not only are you being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of mom. Increasing in the knowledge of celebrities. Increasing in the knowledge of the new iPad. Increasing in the knowledge of the brand new car. Increasing in the knowledge of who? God. To know God means salvation. When I connect with, when I decided, when we all decided as Christians to get to know God, that led us to our salvation, because the only way we could know him was to be baptized into Christ. It's the only way. Why? Because every time God looks at us, he ought to be able to see his son. He ain't looking at us. If he looked at us, then he sees a flawed man or woman. When he looks at his son, he sees perfection. But to just know God, that ain't it. There's more to it than that. And there are some who have made the claim, yes, I accepted Jesus Christ into my life. I've been baptized into Christ. I have a relationship with God. And you know, I'm still getting high on Tuesdays. I just want you to know, I'm still going to get high on Tuesdays because, I mean, I'm saved now. That's all. As long as I know I'm going to heaven, it's going to be a good time down here and it's going to be a great time up there. No. Last time I checked, that ain't correct. That's incorrect. To know God, have salvation. The mature Christian understands to know God increasingly means sanctification, which means I set myself apart from this world every single day of my life. And that is a battle. That is a challenge. Think of all the advertisements we see, everything we see on TV, what the majority goes with, and we're the minority from time to time, on your jobs, out and about. Christians can be the minority. To know him means I die to myself every day so that I can be more and more like my father. The more I become attached to him, the less I become attached or I become more detached from the world. So I live here, but I also understand I'm an ambassador. My citizenship is already reserved for me in heaven. 
I'm already, I know where home is. This ain't home. I'm here for a short while. I'm an ambassador. I need to make God look good. How many of you, when you stepped out of the house, you remember uh, mom and dad told you, uh, when you walk out of this house, you represent me? Amen. Anybody been there? Y'all remember that? You represent this family, and if you do anything that's going to undermine or make our family look bad, you might not be in the family <laughs> anymore. You might be gone. The same is true with us as Christians, as ambassadors here on this earth. We have to do things that model discipleship of a mature Christian. You can't be ambassador for Christ cutting up down here, knowing you're going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm saved. Y'all can still club if you want to. I'm, I mean, I'm clubbing too, but, you know, I, at least I know I'm saved. You can't be an ambassador for God doing that. He says, I pray that your knowledge may increase in him. And the more our knowledge increases in him, the more it's going to change us from the inside. That inner man actually becomes stronger. And you have a stronger set of lenses on you. You can see things spiritually. Then when things happen in this world, you don't trip off that at all. Because you already know who's in control and the victory has already been won. Put on the right lenses. Don't put, don't put these on. You'll go blind if you put on this. <laughs> my wife put my lenses on not too long ago and she said, wow. <laughs> and then I found out I, got, I just got another pair of lenses and uh, they told me how much it costs without the insurance and that's just because it, it just takes a lot for me to be able to see I just put it like that <laughs> if you ever see me try to get in the car without these on please stop me <laughs> I, I put these glasses on a woman I tried to do contacts and the woman she said honey just, just quit <laughs> she said you're out here just, just stop it just, just put these on so that's okay I can't see in the future but I can at least see today <laughs> so I think we're okay Pray for knowledge in him was the fourth prayer. The fifth prayer that Paul makes to those in Colossae is that you pray for strength. Look at verse 11. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Paul says you need to pray. I pray for strength for you because I understand that without God's strength, we are weak. You realize we are completely weak without God's power and strength within us. Turn to Matthew 26 and 41. Oh, here we go flipping. <laughs> 